Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining today. My name is Melissa and I'm here to lead you through all levels yoga. So we are going to practice together for 45 minutes today. Just a reminder throughout the class today to listen to your body. So if there's any stretches that are not working for you, please skip them, come on out and modify. And things that you'll need for your practice today is it will be nice to have a yoga mat. If you have the yoga block and blanket, that can be a nice prop to just help you in the poses, assist a little bit in the poses, but definitely not required. So if you don't have them, it's totally fine. As we start today, I wanted to share a passage that I came across the other day that I just thought was really beautiful. I thought it you know, ties in nicely to the yoga practice. The Navajo teach their children that every morning when the sun comes up, it's a brand new sun. It's born again each morning. It lives for the duration of one day and in the evening it passes on, never to return again. As soon as the children are old enough to understand, the adults take them out at dawn and they say, the sun has only one day. You must live this day in a good way so that the sun won't have wasted precious time. Acknowledging the preciousness of each day is a good way to live and a good way to reconnect to our basic joy. And I really love this because I thought, you know, we're practicing yoga in the evening and, you know, some may say, oh, the day's over. Um, but, you know, when we read something like this, it's just really nice to know that we can begin again. You know, maybe we had goals for ourselves today to eat a certain way or move a certain amount of time or whatever it may have been, think of a positive way or something like that. And you might say, oh, I fell off the wagon, you know, the whole day is just, you know, gone or something. But reading that is just such a nice reminder that we have this ability to start fresh and to start new in each moment. So maybe just giving yourself a little refresh, you know, thanking yourself for coming to the yoga mat today and just knowing that from this moment forward can be a new start and a new beginning. So as we go through our class today, I wanted to do a bit of a practice with our backs. So many times people come to yoga and they say that their back hurts and that might be the case for many of you on tonight. So I was thinking that we could work with different back bends, which will be a really nice way to open the back up and stretch and strengthen the back in different ways. And that will really help to create quite a bit of balance in the body. I think what happens a lot is we sit a lot through our day and the muscles in the front of our body tend to shorten and then our back muscles tend to lengthen. So then there, there, there's this imbalance between the front and the back body. So what we'll work on today is trying to create a bit more strength in the back body. So like tighten those muscles up a little bit more. And then since these muscles in the front get short from kind of rounding forward, being at the computer, we can try to create a little bit more length in the front of the body. So as we start, we'll come on into a child's pose. And child's pose is nice because there are a couple of options. Feel free to grab a blanket if you wanted to pad your knees. And one option is having your knees together and then just draping yourself over the front of the legs. Now that option is nice if your low back feels tight, if you have back pain. And this is a nice option if you wanted to do more of a hip opening. So that would be taking your big twist to touch, have your knees out almost like a big V. And then you're just gonna let yourself drop forward here. So there's really no right or wrong. You can just check in with your body and just see what would feel right for you in this moment. Let's take that opportunity to close the eyes. And then allow for yourself to drop into your body and your breath. and allowing yourself to release the day so far. So whether the day has been really great or not so great, just knowing with the yoga practice, we have this ability to start fresh and to start new in the moment. Maybe scanning your body here, noticing where you're holding on to tension. And then letting that tension go with each exhale. Good. 
feel free to set an intention. It's always nice to move into a yoga practice with intention. That's just a goal or a desire that you have. And that could be as simple as relaxing, taking this time to practice self-care. It might be that you're experiencing some discomfort and that you want to release that through the yoga practice. Let's begin. We can start by coming forward into table. And as we come into table, we'll take some time to work with earth salutations today. So earth salutations are very grounding. You may have heard of sun salutations, so they're a little different than that. So they're really grounding and they are really nice heart opening to do. So we'll work with a bunch of different back bends. We'll just kind of flow from one pose to the next. So as we start, we'll just stand up on our knees. This is a knee down mountain pose. Take your hands to the sky, breathe in. And we're gonna come back to our child's pose as you exhale. This one is also called Garbhasana. Engaging your core, ripple forward through the spine one vertebrae at a time. So this takes us into a knee down plank position. We'll reverse push up down to the mat and we're gonna try a Sphinx pose to start. So a nice gentle back bend to warm the spine up. So for this one, we're just gonna let our hands slide out in front. Take your elbows in line with your shoulders. Maybe reach for opposite arms here, just to make sure elbows aren't too far from one another. And we can stay here if you'd like. So this is a really nice low back bend. Now, if you'd like to try a deeper back bend, you can press your hands down, elbows will lift up, and then gently wrap your elbows in towards one another. So this brings us into low cobra. This is Bhujangasana. And you can stay here. And if you wanted to intensify the back bend even more, you could work on trying to straighten the arms. And this is a variation of seal pose. So I love these three postures because everyone can find the expression that works the best for their body. Our bodies are all so different. We've been through different things. We have different movement patterns. So it's nice that we can modify. Come on down to the mat. Let's take a nice full breath here and then lifting into a down dog as you exhale. So for down dog, toes will curl under. We'll take our hips right on up to the sky. Again, coming back to that upside down V shape. And we are going to shake it out a little bit on this one. So it may feel nice to bend one knee to bend the other knee. And maybe relax your head. So you could shake out your head yes, and you could shake out your head no. Sometimes with our head, we think that it's relaxed, but it's holding quite a bit of tension. So see if you can just let your head hang heavy, just like a weight. Let's bring it to stillness. Knees are gonna come down, hips to heels, back to child's pose. And then coming right up onto the knees, we'll take a nice full breath in, hands reach to the sky, and then hands come to the heart. So that was one full earth salutation. We're going to try a whole bunch, but we're going to work with different variations. So hands to the sky, breathe in. Let's come back on through to child's pose, breathe out. Come on forward, ripple forward through the spine. Reverse push up down to the mat. Let's try a variation of cobra here. So for this variation of cobra, take your hands underneath your shoulders. So I want to take the tips of the fingers in line with the tops of the shoulders and then the pinkies in line with the deltoids. Glue the tops of your feet down. Glue the pubic triangle down. And then try to lift up to your navel. So sometimes people think, oh, I'm so flexible, and they try to straighten their arms, and they move very deeply into the pose, but that's not the goal of this one. The goal is try to lift to the navel because we're trying to target the mid-back muscles. So a lot of the back bends in yoga are really good for low back flexibility and upper back flexibility, but it can be trickier to strengthen the mid-back, and this is a wonderful stretch for that. Let's bring ourselves down to the mat. Full breath here. And then on exhale, let's bring it back to down dog. So we're gonna take our hips right on up to the sky. Down dog, also called Adho Mukha Svanasana. 
And let's take a few breaths here. Just gently softening your heels down towards the mat as you exhale. Now your heels don't have to touch the ground, but we want to send our weight back into the heels. So not a lot of weight in the hands. Hands can be quite light here. Knees will begin to lower. Hips to the heels. Let's float it back to child's pose. We're going to rise on up, knee down mountain. And then hands at heart as you exhale. Breathe in. Let's reach up, knee down mountain. Child's pose, hips to heels. Come on forward. Knee down plank. Reverse push up. Let's try boat pose from here. Now for boat, let's take our arms behind our body. We'll give ourselves a little heart opener here as well. So fingers will interlock, palms will touch. Maybe imagine that you could squeeze a pencil between the shoulder blades. Glue the pubic triangle down and then try to lift off of the mat. So on this one, we're gonna feel our legs lifting up. We're gonna feel our chest lifting up. We'll breathe here. So just feel how your body reacts to the breath. On the inhale, feel yourself lifting up. We're going to move deeper into the back bend. And then on the exhale, feel how you find a little softness in the pose. Let's begin to bring it down to the mat. Take a nice full breath in here. And then lift it back into a down dog as you exhale. Again, heels are gonna soften down to the mat. Weight is back in the heels. Try to lengthen your spine. Feel your sitting bones reaching and stretching to the sky. Feel the backs of your legs lengthening with the breath as well. Knees begin to lower, hips to the heels. We'll float it back on through to child's pose. Rising up, knee down mountain. Hands at heart as you breathe out. Let's try one more. Hands up and child's pose. Core engages, ripple forward through the spine, knee down plane. Moving into our reverse push up down to the mat, and we'll take our chaturanga dandasana. For this one, we'll try for a king cobra pose. So we're gonna take our hands under our shoulders and then walk your hands out to the sides of the mat. So maybe a foot to the right and a foot to the left. Be tented up onto your fingertips. Try to point your elbows to the sky. Glue the tops of your feet down and then lift as high as you would like. So if you just lift a little bit, that's great. You don't have to straighten your arms. If you did want that deeper back bend, you could work on straightening your arms. To make this stretch easier, hands are gonna be further away from your body and you'll have the elbows bent. And then making it more challenging, you'll have your hands in towards your body more and you're gonna to work to straighten out the arms. Let's begin to release down. We'll take a nice full breath in here, lifting through downward facing dog. Knees begin to lower, hips to the heels for child's pose. Rising up, hands to the sky, breathe in, and then hands at the heart for a breath out. Let's try dolphin pose. So dolphin is a great pose for building that strength in the shoulders and in the arms. It really can help with that chaturanga transition in the yoga practice. So for this one, we're gonna come right down onto our elbows. Reach for opposite arms so that you have the right distance between your elbows. Fingers interlock, palms touch, or press your hands down into the mat. Toes begin to curl under. We're gonna lift our hips to the sky when you're ready. Now, if you'd like the stretch to be more challenging, you can walk your toes into your face. Feel the backs of your legs lengthening, sitting bones to sky. Feel your spine lengthen. And then holding this, and if you'd like to invite some challenge, maybe take your right leg up. We'll find our way into a three-limbed dolphin. 
reset back on through dolphin last leg rises when you're ready and release knees begin to lower let's take a moment to curl the toes under sitting back onto the heels and we'll try a toe stand here i know this one isn't easy this one always brings up quite a bit of stretching for most people now feel free to hang out here if the knees are really tight and the quads are tight feel free to hang out up here now if you're here and everything feels okay you may want to build on it you could try out for the balance so for that one, you're gonna to try to come onto your toes. You'll have the hands on the sides of you for support. You can always grab onto your yoga blocks. And then maybe one hand to the heart space and then the other hand will meet it. Now, if you're balancing here and this is easy and you wanna challenge even more, try to lift yourself off of the heels. We really wanna to try to lengthen our spine here. Try to lengthen the back of your neck reach and stretch through the crown of the head let's begin to release on this one we're going to come on forward into tabletop tap the tops of your feet out try to let go of tension there and let's come on back to down dog when you're ready as you take down dog toes to the hands let's bring it forward into a fold as you take your fold Shake it out a little bit here. So it may feel nice to bend one knee, to bend the other knee. Maybe relax your head yes, and relax your head no. From here, let's take a roll through the spine to come on up. So hands are gonna relax and you'll get nice and grounded in your feet, maybe bend your knees. We're just gonna come on up one vertebrae at a time. So nice and slow, no rush on this one. When you come on up to stand, let's try a few shoulder rolls. So let's just take your shoulders up, back and down. Breathe in and out. And then one more time, nice inhale and exhale. Let's try for a dancer pose. So for a dancer, if the balance isn't so strong, feel free to grab onto a wall or a surface that might be close by. Right hand for your right foot. Grab on the outside of your foot. That's a bit of a gentler stretch on your shoulder. But if you'd like a deep shoulder stretch, you can grab on the inside of your foot. Left hand comes out in front. Maybe take your index and your thumb to touch. Begin to kick your foot into the hand. We're going to come forward a bit. Now, as we're balancing, really kick the foot into the hand. That will help to give you a back bend through the three parts of your back. It will help to give you a nice quad stretch, a nice hip flexor and psoas stretch. Also, so strengthening for that left leg. We strengthen all of the muscles through the foot, through the ankle, and through the knee. From here, let's come into warrior two. So we're gonna open it up nice and wide. In warrior two pose, nice deep bend in your front knee. Feel your front heel in line with your back arch. Let your shoulders be over your hips. We don't wanna be leaning forward too much. We wanna have this nice alignment, shoulders stacked over your hips. See if you can relax your shoulders from your ears. We're gonna try for a floating warrior two pose. So hands will reach to the sky on the in breath. Then we're gonna come back, do a nice reset on out breath. Inhale, let's rise up. Exhale, release, and we'll go three more times here. Now, when this feels complete, let's do a little reset back on through. We'll try for year two and then reverse, split it up and back. Reverse for year two, also called peaceful for year two. Have a nice deep bend in the front knee. So this one can be a little challenging and you might want to straighten the leg. That's very natural. Four engages will do almost like a windmill down for a lateral angle. Now, if this is feeling easy and you want to invite a bit more challenge, maybe bring your hand down onto the mat. And just trying not to collapse here into the bottom shoulder. Try to lift a little bit, lengthen a little bit. 
core engages, let's rise on up. We're gonna try reverse, float it up and float it back. Cartwheel down, lateral angle. And then begin to just flow with your breath here. So you're just gonna flow to the rise and to the fall of the breath. Rising up, let's come back to warrior two. And then to reset on warrior two, relax your arms and then turn your left toes in so that they're lining up with the right toes. We're gonna have both of our feet moving in the same direction. Try to have your toes in line, heels in line so it's nice and safe for your knees. We're gonna come down to a forward fold with the legs wide on the exhale. So hands will lower down into the mat. Shake it out a little bit here, bend one knee. Bend the other knee, shake your head out yes, and shake your head out no. Let's begin to find stillness on this one. Walk your hands out in front, landing in a down dog with the legs wide. Try to draw all of the weight back into your heels. Let your hands be a bit lighter. And almost create this sensation like your hands could lift from the mat. Walk your hands under your body and then land in a fold with the legs wide. So we'll gently roll the weight forward into the toes, let the heels be light. Try to relax your head. Try to look towards your navel, see if you can relax your head a bit more. We will release that one. Walk your hands to Frame your front foot, step yourself back. Let's come to our runner's lunge. And then as you take runner's lunge, we're gonna do that reverse push up. So knees may lower, they can stay lifted for more intensity. Reverse push up down, Chaturanga Dandasana. Let's take it to an upward facing dog here. So we'll take this opportunity to relax the shoulders away from the ears. And then lifting into a down dog when you're ready. Let's bring our toes forward to the hands. Forward fold, also called Uttanasana. Bring yourself into a half lift. Come on down to a fold and then let's rise that up. Nice full breath in. Hands at heart, exhale. Let's take our left hand for the left foot and we'll try dancer on the other side, Nadarajasana. And right hand comes out in front. And for this one, maybe come into a mudra. So you may want to take the pads of your fingers, so the pad of your index and your thumb to touch. And then we'll begin to kick the foot into the hand to come forward. So our mudra, this is called the chin mudra, the yana mudra. So this mudra is good for cultivating concentration, creativity. It can help with our balance, holding the balancing pose. Open up, let's take it to our year two, nice big step. And warrior two pose. Now the feet won't actually move, but almost imagine that there was magnets on your feet and they were pulling in towards the center of the mat. So when we think about that, it really helps to activate more muscles in the legs. Coming into a flowing warrior two, reaching up, stretching up, Thinking down. So as you do this, I invite you to take a deeper bend into the front knee each time that you lower down. So as you bend into that front knee, you can just sink deeper and deeper into the stretch. Work more muscles, create that flexibility in your body. Warrior two, we're gonna hold this for just a moment. Vira, Padrasana Dwi, and then reverse, float it up and float it back. Peaceful warrior two pose. Let your back hand glide down your back leg. You may wanna wrap your arm around your low back. 
reach for the other hip crease. Take a half bind here. Core engage it, but spin it down. Lateral angle. So arm down to the leg. And you can also take your hand down to the mat if you would like. Now in this pose, almost create a bit of a twisting sensation. So try to roll your left shoulder back. Try to roll your right shoulder under. Let your core engage as you rise and up. Deep bend in that front knee, reverse, float it up and back. Core engages, let's come on through. Lateral angle, maybe extended lateral angle. And then again, just finding your own rhythmic flow, flowing to the rise and the fall of your breath. And we'll rise. Let's begin to reset back on through. Warrior two pose, relaxing arms, resetting on the legs, right toes will turn in. So then we have our toes in line, heels in line, and let's try goddess pose here. So let your toes turn out, let your heels shift in. Have a nice deep bend in your knees. Let's take our hands onto the legs, and then we're just gonna do a little shift side to side. So sometimes as we do this, it can help to open up the hips a little bit more. We can get a little deeper bend into the knees. And release, let's relax those legs. We can straighten them out, turn your toes in a little bit. So either they're straight forward and you can also turn them in a little bit as well. Let's take a nice full breath to lengthen here. We're gonna come on down to fold as you exhale. Planting your right hand in front of your face. Let's take our left hand to the sky on the exhale. We'll try for a twist here. And then as you're twisting, this is our wide-legged fold twist. Imagine that you have your shoulders and your wrists in the same line. So you want to create this long line of energy, fingertips to fingertips. Left hand lowers, right hand rises with the breath. Now maybe bringing a bit more weight into your left foot. That will help your left hip to rise up a little bit. Helping to balance off the hips and the low back. Let's float our hands down. We'll reset back into our fold and then walking to runner's lunge. Hands will frame your front foot. Step yourself back, plank, high push up pose, knees up or down. And then let's come down onto our stomachs from here. So we'll try for a bow pose, which is a little deeper back bend. If you wanted to modify, you can try boat. We did that a little earlier in the practice. That's where the legs lift, torso lifts, and arms lift. If you wanna go for bow, it's almost like building on the dancer pose a little bit. So you can grab on the outsides of the ankles. It's gonna be a deeper stretch on the shoulders, but if you'd like that deep shoulder stretch, you can grab on the insides of the ankles. And then when you're ready, begin to kick the feet into the hands and try to lift up and make sure that you're breathing. So one of the most common things to do in this pose is to hold your breath. So try to keep your breath flowing in and out as best as possible. And release, we're gonna come on down to the mat. Create a little pillow with your hands to relax your head, draw your feet to the left to the right, little windshield side to side here. As you come into stillness, we're gonna try for a quad stretch. So if you'd like to lift up with that left arm for a half sphinx pose, you can do that. And we'll take our right hand for the right foot. If you can't reach for the foot, just have the knee bending and encourage your leg into your body. 
If you can't reach the foot and you have a yoga strap close by, you can always loop the strap around your foot and pull that in a bit. You can stay propped up on that arm. You can also relax down too if you wanted. You could create a little pillow with the lower arm for support. And we're gonna breathe here. So I know I talked about doing a really nice back bending practice tonight. So quad stretches are so good for our backs. A lot of times our quads get very short from sitting a lot through the day and giving them a really nice stretch often can release the low back quite a bit. So it'd be nice to do this on the right side and on the left side and get nice and balanced here in the quads. Let's release the foot down. We'll try that on the other side. And pulling that in for a moment or two. And this stretch may feel completely different on this side. So especially when we work with our legs and our hips, it's very normal for the body to be very open on one side and then much more closed off on the other side. And that can be for so many reasons. It could be a past injury, maybe a movement pattern, how you naturally step through your day. Maybe you're always stepping with one foot or the other. So the body is so interesting, how everything is so connected. And yoga is such a wonderful practice of trying to create more balance and more alignment. And we'll release that one. From here, let's begin to press up into table. From table, we'll sweep our feet to the right or the left. We'll come to seated. And then as you come into seated, let's try for a reverse table. Sometimes this one is called reverse bridge pose. So what you're gonna do is you'll have your hands behind you. Your toes can be, or your fingertips can be turned in so that they're facing your body. Your knees will be bent and core will engage. And then we're gonna to begin to lift our hips up. So here, we're really trying to energetically lift those hips up. Maybe you can try for a little bit of a back bend here. You can gaze down the front of your body. You can also relax your head back if that's needed. Make sure that you're breathing. We don't wanna hold the breath here. So it's just nice in breath and out breath and releasing so hips will come down let's cross the legs we'll just take a nice comfy seated position hands will come together fingers will interlock palms will touch and then a little bit of a circling out of the wrists maybe find large circles maybe find smaller circles here and reverse I'll just flow in the other direction. And let it go. Let's give it a little shake on out. So we're going to come down onto our backs from here. And working with bridge, so we're going to try a back bend on our back. Feet are going to plant, knees will be bent. And we're gonna take a moving breathing bridge. So we'll just move with our breath. This is a really nice way to gently move into a deeper back bend. Let's take an exhale, tuck your tailbone. So try to draw your navel back and up to the spine a bit. And then roll your low back from the mat. Take your mid back from the mat. And then tuck your tailbone. We're gonna roll it down. So we're gonna feel our mid back lower down. We'll feel our low back lower down. Tailbone tucks, low back lifts, mid back lifts, tailbone tucks, mid back lowers, and low back lowers. Now let's take this time to 
just flow with the breath. We're just gonna move to the rise and the fall of the breath. Lengthen as you inhale. Lengthen as you exhale. As you inhale, feel each vertebrae lifting from the mat. Feel the space between the vertebrae lifting up from the mat. And then on the exhale, feel each vertebrae lowering and then also feel the space between the vertebrae lowering. Let's take a moment to lift on up. We're gonna find a full expression of bridge here. If it feels comfortable, hands can come underneath your body. Maybe imagine that you could squeeze a marble in between the shoulder blades. So try to work your shoulder blades in towards one another. Squeeze the glutes. And maybe imagine that you had a small beach ball in between your knees that you could squeeze as well because we don't want our knees to go out to the sides of the room. Now let's stay here for a moment. If you wanted to build maybe a little bit more challenge, take your left leg to the sky. Nice full breath in and out here. We can lower that foot down. Reset, really lift those hips on up. Opposite leg rises with the breath. And release. Tailbone will tuck. And let's release the upper mid and low back down onto the mat. Soles of the feet will touch. Knees come away from one another, coming into Supta Baddha Kanasana, coming into a reclining bound angle. If you'd like, hands can come onto the body for a bit of connection. Maybe one hand to the heart, one to the ribs, the navel. Close your eyes. Feel your body breathing here. We'll just feel the gentle reaction of our breath in our body. Feel your navel rise on the in breath. Fall on the out breath. Expansion of the ribs on in breath. Contraction of ribs on out breath. Chest rises on in breath. Falls on the out breath. Help of the hands, knees will draw into the center line of the mat. Knees come to the chest, hug them in. Little gentle rock to the right, little gentle rock to the left. Let's begin to bring our left leg up and over. We'll create a figure four stretch here. And as we're here, you can stay right where you are. Maybe flex your foot, encourage this left knee away from the face. If you'd like more of a stretch, you may wanna reach for the back of your right leg. You could reach for the front of your right leg. And if you're feeling extra flexible, you could take your arms on the outsides of your legs and then you could reach your hands to meet. We'll be in this pose for a moment. Maybe find a bit of movement, sometimes rocking side to side can ease you into the stretch. Try to clear your mind of thoughts. So we always have thoughts moving through the mind. Thoughts for the past, thoughts for the future. Try to release your thoughts. Bring your awareness to your breath, to your body, to the present moment.
on doing the legs here. Left foot will plant, right leg draws up and over. Stay where you're at here. Reach for the back of your left leg, for the front of your left leg. Create your movements, maybe find stillness. This is a really beneficial pose for your body. So a lot of times if we work with opening up the hips, it can benefit the low back quite a bit. This pose is one of the best stretches if you ever experience sciatica. So it really just helps to take pressure off of the nerve, offering quite a bit of relief. And this one is called reclining pigeon. So if you're ever in a yoga class and the teacher is teaching pigeon and you know that that's not a pose for you, maybe it's very challenging. Maybe you're not flexible in those areas and it's just very difficult. This is a wonderful modification. So you can always take pigeon on your back. There's also a seated pigeon variation, which is another nice modification. It's always nice to have options. Let's take a moment to come on out of that. Reach for your feet. We'll reset to happy baby. Feet will flex, press out through the heels. Rock to the right and the left. So encourage a 90 degree angle in your legs. This one's also called Balasana. And from here, we'll take a moment or two in Shavasana. We'll come into our resting pose of the yoga practice. Feel free to relax your legs, relax your arms. If your back is tender, low back is tender, sometimes bending your knees, planting your feet, can just offer a little bit of support, taking a bit of pressure off the body. Giving yourself this time in stillness, this time in silence to relax, to release. Just take an opportunity to deepen the breath, to wiggle the fingers and toes. Rolling onto the side, coming into a fetal position. Maybe create a pillow with the lower arm. Feel the head supported. And then rising into the seated when you're ready. As you come to seated, hands can move into the heart space in prayer in Anjali Mudra. Thanking yourself for practicing yoga today, for doing something so good for your mind and your body. The light within me honors the light within you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you for joining today. Great to be here to practice with you. I hope you have a wonderful day today and I look forward to seeing you in class again soon. Take care.
Namaste. Namaste.